Hey guys, welcome back to another repair video. Today we're going to go old school and we are going to fix a Leshy Classic. A client sent this in to me, said that he was shooting, everything was fine, heard a loud noise, and then the valve disappeared. So I'm going to show you how to fix a valve that uh, that happens, but we'll talk a little bit about diagnosing it. Obviously, the obvious sign is the valve disappears, just like this uh, client said. Uh, another telltale sign that you may have broken a valve inside of the Leshy Classic is that you shoot it and then all the air just leaks out of the barrel. Um, that tells you that the valve is no longer sealing your valve seal. So um, the valve housing anyways is no longer being sealed, sealed by the valve. Another thing to think about is when you break a valve, sometimes the valve will lock the regulator. And so you go to bleed it, no air comes out, but you're still showing air inside of your uh, EDMU or your uh, analog gauge. In that case, um, if it's difficult to unscrew, you're gonna need to use the emergency bleed screw, which is underneath the detent here, um, the dust cover. So let's go ahead and drain it. I've already drained this just for the sake of time, but you're gonna take your little two and a half millimeter hex wrench. You're gonna stick it in the back here, as you can see right there, that's your drain plug. All you're gonna do is just crack it Air will bleed out when the air stops. Um, if the valve is there, you obviously push on. If it's not, what you're going to do is just see if this is gently able to be opened. You see how I didn't use any force at all? That tells me that there's no longer any air in the reservoir and that I'm free to take this apart without danger of anything popping. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew it. We can see that the regulator is right here. We're going to go ahead and unscrew the regulator and plenum from the valve housing assembly and we're gonna see what the problem is. Oh, and there you go, broken valve. So uh, valves break for a couple different reasons. Sometimes it's just bad luck. Sometimes it's because you have turned up the hammer spring too much. And uh, in that case, you have uh, busted the valve by overturning it. I do have a, a section on my blog about how to tune it and prevent that. So that is something to be aware of, but there you go. There's your broken valve, pretty simple little fix. Um, and uh, let's talk a little bit about hammers real quick. So one of the things before you put this back in, if you've purchased a valve to be replaced, is to make sure that your new valve, which is right here, goes into the valve seal housing and it's able to be moved very easily with your finger. If it's not, there is a possibility that your hammer has smashed the valve cup right here. Um, you can unscrew this with a screwdriver and a little bit of heat, but I'm going to tell you what the difference between a Gen 1 and Gen 2 hammer is. This is the Gen 2. If you take a look here at the shape of it, you can see that it's got one section cut here and that the hammer itself has been uh, machined flat. If you look at the Gen 1 hammer, you can see that it is a cone and it has a much more pointed end. This hammer, when you would run a regulator too low or you would shoot it to empty and you had hammer spring ten turned up to full power, it could smash the valve cup here. And uh, then it would dent this and then you'd have to either straighten it out or replace it because the valve would no longer move freely back and forth. So this was the Gen 1 hammer. Uh, also, it has some instances when the gun got super cold that inside the valve or the hammer housing, it would vacuum a little bit. So this little relief cut was added to prevent that, okay? Uh, if you don't have a serial number below 500, you have a regular valve. If you do have a serial number below 500, it works perfectly fine. Just don't shoot the gun below 90 bar. I actually don't recommend ever to shoot it below 90 bar in any case. So let's go ahead and put our valve back. And remember, we were gonna check to make sure it moves freely replace your valve spring and there's a little hole inside there so we're just gonna kind of wiggle it and I'm gonna gently start the threads I do not want to cross thread this okay and we're gonna get a little tiny bit of super lube on here if I can find it And I prefer to use super lube, but you can use any sort of silicon-based grease, something clean. Um, 
and just a little touch around the o-ring it doesn't really lubricate the o-ring what it does is it prevents you from cutting it when it goes past the threads which is what you're trying to prevent so we're going to go ahead and wiggle this on now i'm going to show you a little trick to make sure that you know that your air reservoir is sealing so it should do that if it doesn't do that and it just goes all it drops all the way to the bottom it tells you that one of your o-rings inside the air reservoir is bad so in this case we are good to go so we're just going to go ahead and thread it back on and okay so now your gun is fixed you can gas it back up oh before you do that make sure you close off your grub screw here and there's always been a question how tight just snug it guys you don't have to crank it down it's not about force uh, when you're sealing it it's about um, just getting that little ball inside the cup and sealing it, it doesn't have to be cranked down and you don't want to damage it so we're gonna go ahead and fill up our gun make sure that it fills you can see the pressure going up here All right, and we are full. Three thousand psi, and uh, that's why I guess the client likes psi. So, um, and uh, we're good to go. All right. So, I hope that answers any questions. Now you can fix your own valve at home with the simple just purchasing a replacement valve, and you know how to diagnose it. If you have any questions, hit me up at Sales at Edgun West. And thanks for watching the video. I'll see you on the next one.